my pleasure, Amy, to be here and with you all. Um, so thank you so much for, for having me. I put together a, a PowerPoint um, presentation, which they're going to make available to you so you don't have to take too many notes. It's about 10 or 12 pages long, um, but most of it's graphics, so you'll, you'll, you'll be able to follow along. Um, but again, they'll post this in a way that you can get to it right after. So I'm going to go ahead and to, to share my screen. Okay, there we go. Right. So um, I saw that there was a Bloom assessment uh, that um, was on your website. And I believe that what we're gonna talk about today with the four M's goes along with those five segments. They're gonna, there's gonna be an aspect we're gonna talk about wellness, especially, the, its impact on relationships and finances and purpose in life and creativity. So I think this aligns rather nicely uh, along uh, with uh, what uh, Bloom's uh, uh, assessment is looking at and what I'm sure they wanna offer you as part of their membership. One thing I wanna start with as a preface um, is what I have learned uh, is the most powerful word in the English language and it's the word and. Often people see that and they think it's a run-on sentence, but it's really a signal that what comes before or after it, um, it's different. So um, for, I see a fair amount of uh, your uh, women. So being a mother is different than being someone's daughter and being someone's aunt. So it's different. So a person may be a mother, a daughter and an aunt. And it's important to understand that those are different. So when you see a comma, you see the word and, it's really trying to tell you it's something different. So I'm gonna talk about four things today, mapping, mental health and wellness, mediation and mentorship. And as you can see, there's commas and the word and, um, because I want to signify that they're different. Um, and the belief is if we can bring all four uh, to bear in a circumstance, we're gonna have a, a great impact. One of the other things um, that I wanna point out um, is the whole person. Um, and we developed this back in 1999 and it has served us uh, well um, as a way of, as a lens in looking uh, into ourselves, but also looking into the community um, and looking to make sure that these stakeholders um, or these parts are part of what we're doing um, and we don't leave any out. So again, it's our health and making sure we're fit um, and we're healthy um, and we're maximizing ourselves, our spirituality and looking at our belief systems, personal development is becoming and thriving and overcoming and expanding our finances, what we have and what we are able to give, our environment. Um, hopefully it's an environment where you can live uh, and win a recreation. Um, which is what we do to enjoy, relax and challenge ourselves. And last but not least, family and friends. And these are not in any particular order. Um, there is nothing more valuable uh, than the others, but it's just to recognize that's us as a whole person. And sometimes we allow ourselves to get into a situation where we serve one part of it or two parts of it, and we leave the others to the side. And what we will find is that those things that we didn't pay attention will be the things that often take away our dreams and our aspirations because um, we, you know, we put a lot of time and energy into our family and friends um, or into our education, but we forgot to recreate. And we forgot to think about you know, the, the finances that go along with that or um, the impact and the importance that spirituality has or uh, the issue of health. So it's just a reminder that as we anchor in what we're doing, uh, it's just recognizing we're a whole person. And again, as we're bringing groups together um, uh, to tackle circumstances and issues, that it's important that we remember um, if we're going to try to serve uh, the, the whole community and the whole person, that these parts are important parts uh, to be brought to the table and for us to consider as we're making our own personal decisions, but also decisions um, affecting a, a larger group as well. I believe very firmly that we're, we live and we're all doing that right now. Um, and we're embarking on learning and educating ourselves. And I believe because of those two things, we can do better. 
Um, and just, again, keeping in mind that 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 and and that progression that we're living, we're learning, and again, uh, we can do better uh, because that's the progression steps we're taking. Again, as we look at this, this lens um, of mapping and mental health and wellness and mediation and mentorship, I want us to um, think about this as a lens to ex explain what is going wrong, but I also believe very firmly it's also the solution of what we have to do to fix it. So I think that often there are times um, that um, we have circumstances and we can figure out what the problem is. And then we have to use something else to figure out the solution. And I'm wanting to share this with you is because what we have found, you can use these four things to dissect um, and figure out what is wrong, but also this is the answer. So when you look at um, Bill Gates, when you look at Oprah, when you look at um, uh, 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 Barack Obama, yeah, they had a map. They had mental health and wellness. They knew where to go for mediation and where, where there was problems. They knew to bring other people to the table to help them out. And they stood on the shoulders of other people. So when you look at their success, you understand where it came from. And what are the things that um, I'm hoping that this um, model allows people to, to um, consider is we don't have to be baffled anymore. We were, we're hopefully this is be, will be a tool that you'll be able to use to say exactly, I know exactly what happened. I know it's because you had a map, your mental health and wellness was in check, you knew where to go for mediation, and you had mentors, you had people that had your back. So as, I, as we look at these articles, and this is just from, uh, I'm from the Philadelphia area in, in the United States, um, in Pennsylvania, um, and these are just articles that were grabbed from the local uh, headlines on two different days. Uh, this is from this morning about social media uh, feuds, uh, the root of violence. Um, in this circumstance, people were severely hurt by something that was posted on social media. But again, I hope that this allows us to look at why that happened is because there is a faulty map. There's some challenges with mental health and wellness. There is an issue with mediation and mentorship. One of the things uh, that in looking at um, Philadelphia as an example, um, uh, um, crime, the, the, the number is very high. Over 50% of their crimes are related to issues um, uh, related to mediation. But reality is that we have to look at, do we have really things in place to address what we understand statistically is part of the reason, um, which is that mediation. And then we also can look and see that a lot of these things are, are, are also contributed by uh, individuals with uh, challenged uh, mental health and, and wellness issues. And then it, it doesn't take much to make the leap that possibly there's an issue with a map and where they're going. And again, who's their mentors. So again, as we attempt to, to dissect it, we see what, why it was made possible, but I'm also hoping that we can envision that we can begin to offer these four things simultaneously. None is more valuable than the other uh, as part of the solution. So again, when you look at the stuff at the bottom of the screen, you're starting a new job, you're considering marriage, there's financial planning, you're moving, looking at a relationship, a loss of a family member, considering education. Again, I'm hoping that this tool will provide for you a way and a lens to say, okay, fine, what's my map? You know, how, how well am I? Um, and uh, what kind of challenges do, may I have when it comes to mental health? But also it's again, uh, what's working for me um, and what's my wellness in that particular area so that I can continue to um, exercise that. So as I begin this uh, endeavor, I'm gonna stay, um, uh, stay well. And again, mediation. And mediation uh, is attempting to, to pose the question of where do we go for um, uh, remedies? Um, where do we go for advice? Uh, where do we go for uh, uh, correction? Um, that's what is meant by mediation. And we'll, we'll go over that in the next slide as well. And again, uh, mentorship, um, who's there uh, uh, to uh, support me? Um, and sometimes we uh, believe that we're independent. 
And sometimes we'll, we're placed in uh, situations where that's actually the title, um, where you're said that you're you know, an independent uh, planner or uh, you're, in, you're an independent living. And uh, I'm a big student of words. And that's one word I have a very tough time with because I think it's a, it's a blatant lie. And it's a lie because we're never going to be independent. We are interdependent. And I think it's our belief and in those moments when we think that we're independent that causes the greater harm um, is to just recognize that how we are constructed. Our arms are connected to our chest and our chest is connected to our torso. And so it's, it's again, I think there are memos throughout our existence that tries to remind us we're interdependent. One needs the other. Um, and that we, are, again, our challenges come in when we believe that we are independent. We need other, pe other people and other people uh, need us and we need to figure out a way uh, to make that work. So again, the four M's happens to be that the lead words start with the letter M, but it really stands for mandatories. These are the four things that I'm suggesting to you need to be present as we look at solutions uh, to circumstances or dissect uh, what went wrong. These are the mandatories and they're mandatory if we want for ourselves um, and others to be um, uh, safe. Let me minimize this, sorry. Um, and um, also as we're looking to provide services to other people, then we, as we look at success, these are the mandatories of, uh, of, um, uh, of those three. And mapping, it's just an effort to plan and record and chart and really pose the question, where are you going? Mental health and wellness is focused on being stable and how we're functioning and how we're coping. And again, the question we're posing is, are you okay? Mediation is how we look to, for uh, things to be, into, for people, places and things to intervene, uh, facilitation and, and enabling, and really asking the question, did you consider this? Mentorship is about who's our guide, our tutor, our teacher, and most importantly, who's got our back. But those are the, the as we put together, and you see on the next page here, this plan, um, we ask ourselves in that particular area, you know, where am I going? And again, uh, one of the other lines is who's my stakeholder? Again, uh, stakeholders, just again, reminding ourselves we're interdependent. Who else can afford uh, to help me along with this, uh, this process? And again, that, that's done in each of the four areas. And on the, on the uh, right-hand side there, you see, excuse me, that uh, the life domains are repeated again. So just reminding ourselves as we put a plan together, think about yourself as a whole person um, and make sure that your plan uh, considers all of those aspects. One of the other things I wanted to share with you is something um, that when, my, when I started this, you know, many years ago that I uh, developed and I often go back to this because, you know, we've developed, uh, you know, a, a manual and it's like 450 pages of, of all of these, what we call winning strategies. But this is one winning strategy that is, is, has gone through the test of time. That if I can just start my day and end my day, just reminding myself to be grateful that today is here and I need to figure out a way to make the most of it. That I need to be aware and I need to learn as much as I can about the much I do not know. And to be appreciative that everybody in every place has value. And to be happy, which is again, finding the beauty in the people, places and things that I experience every day and find a way to celebrate it. Um, so again, I have found that that's often, you know, where the problem em emanates from is that I'm not grateful, I'm not aware, I'm not appreciative, or, or I'm not really focused on being happy. Or when I look at what went well, uh, again, those four things have been able to uh, serve me well as a, a litmus test to look through. One other thing I want to share with you is five closest friends. There's been some research that has shown that you're generally not going to do better than the five closest people to you. That often those five people are gonna serve as anchors to you. They're not gonna propel you, they're gonna anchor you. So it's really important that we choose who those people are very carefully. But I wanted to extrapolate that a, a little further uh, to, to share with you that these are the qualities that I'd like to suggest to you that you find in your five closest friends. 
and um, they, st they, they stand for in an acronym, Water Me, which is H2O Me, because there's two H's, an O, and then an M and E. So the two H's are look for humility, that people um, don't take themselves very seriously. Next, that look for humor. Again, not uh, trying to entertain everybody and um, making jokes. It's just a lightness with how they handle uh, the things that life has to offer. Remembering the most powerful word is and. This is gonna happen and that's gonna happen and that's gonna happen. And, it, and just to remind ourselves um, that I have to take things lightly um, because this is just part of what, what happens. Um, and I have to learn how to deal with the ands. Next is that optimism uh, and having a quality of being able to, no matter what the circumstances, is find a way to help your, themselves and others to keep going. That they're mindful, that they take the time to, to study um, and realize that you're on your own, but you're not alone. Um, and sometimes when we deal with the circumstances we're dealing with, we feel this is we're the only person that's ever had uh, this, this problem. Um, but part of being mindful is to recognize I got to be transparent and willing to, to share uh, this circumstance uh, with other people um, and to receive what they have to share. Um, but I can't do that in isolation. I can't do that if I'm independent. Uh, that process only works um, when I'm interdependent. And last but not least, uh, to make uh, one of your five closest friends empowerment, uh, that uh, people are trying to um, uh, help me uh, to stand strong and I'm trying to do the same thing as well. But as I, as I choose those five closest friends, that's uh, what I, the qualities I wanna choose. And more importantly, as I try to work on myself to make myself the best I can be, those are the five qualities that I'm attempting uh, to improve upon so that I, as, I, uh, as things I bring to the table uh, to help myself and others. Another thing I'd like to share with you uh, is the concept of ships. That what I'm trying to, to work on uh, in myself and, and hopefully supporting others is to be the, burst, the best person they can be. So personship. And also to, for, to help myself and others practice fellowship to be the best us. And then also to work on citizenship to be the best community. And, it, and again, uh, to work on leadership, which is helping myself and others choose the best pathway. But those are the four ships that I'm trying to, uh, to right size and I'm trying to steer is again, to being the best person, uh, the best fellow, uh, the best citizen and the best leader. And one of the other things about leadership is that we do a disservice to helping other people, helping people understand everybody's a leader, everyone's a leader. Everyone needs to be developed as a leader because a leader has followers. And at any given time, someone could be following you. And because they're following you, by that definition, you're a leader. And often we put uh, so much energy into that person in that corner office. Um, but I've seen in, in visiting schools especially that um, it often is not the principal who's running the shop. It's the janitor that's been there 32 years, runs that school. That's the leader. The manager of the school is the principal, but you'll sometimes see they're not the leader. Um, it's something different. Um, so it's important for us to just recognize that this is a quality that we need to work on with every person. It's not a, a segment that is reserved for just a few. The last thing I wanna cover before we have a chance uh, to have any questions and answers uh, uh, that we want to entertain is just reminding uh, my full-time job is uh, being the chief executive officer of eight uh, different uh, uh, nonprofit uh, focused corporations. And um, part of my title is president and CEO. And um, I should, we, we probably should have a disclaimer when I give a presentation that if you don't like acronyms, I'm probably not your guy. <laughs> um, and I did a presentation years ago and I were doing wrap up comments and one of the guys, you know, had said, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of acronyms. Um, and, I, and I said, oh, this must have been a very painful workshop for you. But he said that, you know, this is probably the first time that the, some of those acronyms have been useful. Um, but I'm a big fan of, of, of acronyms because I try to develop things that 
can walk with people and they don't have to see it again, um, that they've seen it once and it makes sense. And what I believe a CEO is, uh, for even, uh, in, even in the company, often they're the most capable because they understand the product, they've been around a long period of time. So when it comes to what the business is doing often, not all the time, um, they're the most capable person. And a lot of times they're the most eager um, and also the most optimistic. Um, but we need to remember that we're the CEO of our own life. We have to remember, no matter what life tells you, you are capable. No matter what life does to you, you need to be eager. And again, no matter what life does to you, we have to maintain that level of optimism um, because it's very, very important. And again, like a leadership, everyone's a leader and everyone's a CEO. So as I wrap up uh, my uh, presentation um, regarding mapping and mental health and wellness and mediation and mentorship, uh, the four mandatories, uh, and the short version is the four M's, I hope and pray that this has been something that has been useful to you, and more importantly, that you can use it um, and pass it on to anyone else who may find it, uh, again, in, in examining the good times, as well as those that are challenging, I'm hoping that this is a lens to help you uh, look at it uh, from both vantage points. So without further ado, I will entertain, I'll turn it back to Amy, who will thank help us entertain you, thank you, Daniel. Thank you so much, you know, uh, and I love that the four M's uh, really relate to where are you going? Are you okay? Did you consider this? And who's got your back? And as we go into our breakout rooms uh, shortly, we're going to have a discussion right now. Uh, we're, that's what we're going to do. We're going to shape the conversation uh, to you and frame it in a way that's going to be helpful. So where, where are your four M's in your life? And where, and speaking individually as to what, what you can do and your community, we're hoping is going to be who's got your back. So um, uh, questions for Nathaniel, feel free to raise your hand um, uh, or uh, in the uh, reaction area and or I can see you. But something that resonated, some thoughts, I'm looking, please speak if I can. Oh, yes, Elaine Bloom. Hi, um, thank you so much. Um, your presentation's excellent, found it very, very useful. Um, and I, I like the fact that you do put emphasis on the fact basically we aren't meant to be tribal. We, uh, there's a lot of self-help books and that, but what they don't uh, tell you, on a lot of them, is that we need to um, reach out to other people and for our happiness, for companionship, to connect, um, and so on. Um, so as much as you say we can't be totally independent, I, I agree completely. And you're putting, uh, I just thought everything was excellent. Well, thank you so much. So I, I, have, to I have to assume that this group is named after you. Um. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I have to say again, it's my maiden name that oh. I never used. I hated it as a kid. I got teased when it came springtime. Elaine, are you gonna bloom? And it didn't help to be a chubby kid too. So I got bullied for everything. And now, yes, I'm using it for this, finally, this name. That's wonderful. 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 And I know, th thank you so much, Elaine. And Brenda Hyde has a question. Brenda? Hi, everybody. <laughs> I decided to just open up my camera and get comfortable. So good, good. Um, good, good seeing you. Thank you, I appreciate that. I, I look forward to this. And, I thought your presentation was wonderful. The question I have for you is, was there a moment because you were um, without parents at a very young age and then at 18, till 18 under the ward of the court, correct? Was yes, there correct. someone along the way that mentored you that, or was there just an aha moment that you came about as an adult or how did you become down this sure. path yourself? Um, I want to make two points uh, related to your question. First, um, often when you know when children lose their their parents, and I only had my mom. My father uh, is uh, unknown, um, and I didn't realize how shocking that was until I went on a cruise ship and I showed them my birth certificate, and they would thought it was fraudulent because there was no father figure filled, filled in on the on the uh, on the uh, birth certificate. Um, but um, I think often when you lose a parent or parents you're then looking for somebody else to fill their shoes. 
And one of the things I try to share with kids um, that are in that circumstance, you may be fortunate enough to have that, but I can promise you there'll always be someone. In my case, there wasn't one person that saw me through the age of five to 18, but there were different people. Um, and I think that's important to point out is that um, there's always the provision. Uh, and again, it's maybe not the way you envision it because you have it all planned out, especially at eight years old, you think you know exactly how the world's gonna be. But when again, in looking back, and I'm now 56, but in looking back, um, I recognize there was always somebody there and uh, I was never forsaken. Uh, I just at times were a little, it was a little for stupid uh, not to realize that I was provided for. So I try to make sure I encourage um, um, people uh, in my circumstance and ones that are not to understand that the provision uh, is often there. It's just not the way we envisioned it. Second part to your question I would like to say is that there was a, a circumstance that uh, I refer to as the bicycle story um, that I'll tell quickly so you guys can get into your breakout groups. Um, but uh, I was in a, an agency called St. Dominic's Home uh, run by uh, Dominican sisters uh, in uh, Rockland County, which is right outside of uh, New York City. Um, actually the nuns, uh, you know, hundred something years ago took children from New York City and brought them up to the suburbs um, um, into the orphanage um, uh, to raise them. Um, there was a, a day that my, my brothers and sisters were supposed to come visit and they couldn't because their van broke down. So I heard the news um, in the social service building and then I walked over and sat on the front steps of the administration building and out came Sister Mary Patrick. Sister Mary Patrick was probably in her early 60s at that point, a little frail uh, 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 Irish uh, nun. Um, but she said to me, Matt, uh, what, what, why are you sitting here? And I explained to her why. And she said, she patted me on my head and said, just sit there for a moment and um, uh, I'm gonna get something for you. So uh, everything was uh, given to us by a storeroom. I mean, this storeroom had everything you could ever imagine uh, for, uh, for uh, an institution serving 200 uh, children. But out of those 200, I think I was one of two orphans. So originally back in the day, that was all the children, but uh, by that particular time, late 70s, early 80s, um, I was um, uh, one of only two. But sister went downstairs to, this, to the storeroom, which is about 60 steps down, um, and came up 60 steps with a bicycle. Um, and, and poor sister was you know, ready to fall over, um, but uh, um, uh, she gave me the bicycle and said, I can't make things much better for you, but you know, here's a bicycle and enjoy it. So I took the bicycle, I went back to my cottage and our cottage um, was uh, uh, 23 beds and 23 dressers, um, no room. It was just a big, large room. And that's how uh, we, uh, we were uh, set up. Um, but I knew when I brought this bicycle back that some of my you know, fellow brothers had a little klepto problem. Um, so I needed to watch them pretty closely when they borrowed this bicycle. But one of them asked me to borrow the bicycle um, and was riding uh, down the, the driveway. And I was watching him because you got to watch them closely. And as I was watching them, that was the moment that it dawned on me. As I was watching the back of his head, um, uh, I recognized that I wanted to be Sister Mary Patrick. No, I did not want to be a Catholic nun, but I wanted her job. So I started signing my name, Nathaniel J. Williams, Executive Director. Now it took me another 13 years for that to happen, but that's been my title ever since. So I think that you know, if we can help people, especially young children, figure out what they want to do. It gives them the hope and also a filter so when drugs or alcohol or other things were offered because I wanted to be Nathaniel J. Williams executive director, that wasn't happening. Now I have a, 11 other brothers and sisters, uh, some of them who have already passed away, um, a couple of them, uh, the ones that have passed, none of them got past the age of 50. Um, and, and some of those by their, uh, their own uh, challenges uh, that they experience. Um, but I, I can tell you, what made the difference uh, for me was having that plan. I didn't know to call it a forums plan, but I had a map that helped me with mental health and wellness. You know, it reminded me that if I have a problem, I need to get mediation. And again, there were people that had my back. It was not the people I expected, but the, I, I, I had cover. Um, so um, hopefully in answering your question, I, I've clarified for you what made a difference for me was seeing something, um, and, and, and I'm sure, 
I never had a chance to, you know, to, to share that impact with Sister Mary Patrick. When I finally reached back to St. Dominic's and said, hey, is Sister around? You know, and, I, and, she, and I shared the story. She said, well, when you were 13, uh, Sister was, you said it was in her early 60s. So now that you're, you know, 30 or 40 years old, do the math. Do you think Sister's still here? You know, so um, she, she's not here. But I did take a walk up to the graveyard and uh, have a chance to, to talk to her um, uh, vicariously uh, by, by being there. Um, so uh, again, I think it's important that we recognize that with that hope and with a plan, um, we didn't know what to call it back then, but uh, she gave me a 4Ms plan. And so hopefully because she gave me that, I can share that with you today.